Hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to be explaining Euclidean rhythms. Now they sound pretty complicated, but in reality it's actually pretty simple. There are only three things you really need to worry about. The first is how many steps there are in your sequence. The second is how many notes or hits there are in the sequence. And the third is the rotation or offset. And to help demonstrate these ideas, Qubit Electronics have very kindly sent over a pulsar module, which is great at sequencing Euclidean rhythms. So let's take a look. So this is the pulsar from Qubit. It is a rhythm generator that has a Euclidean rhythms mode, which is great because it allows us to output up to four separate Euclidean rhythms, and they are going to be triggering four different sounds from the Qubit chord, the root, third, fifth, and seventh. So that's what you're going to be hearing. In a Euclidean rhythm, the first thing you want to determine is how long you want your sequence to be, so the number of steps. At the moment, we are using a 16-step sequence. We can adjust this with the length here. Um, for example, we could have an 8-step sequence, or a 4-step sequence, or we can go all the way down to 1 and even reverse it if we like. Um, but let's, for the moment, go all the way back to a 16-step sequence, and this will allow the whole dial to be used. And a lot of more traditional linear sequences are 16 steps too, so this should help make things a bit easier. So once we've decided how many steps we have, the next thing we want to determine is the number of notes or hits. And we can do that by turning this encoder here. And as you can see, a second note has appeared. And when you add notes, as you can see there, they are distributed as evenly as possible across the sequence's length. So we've got four hits here and the sequence length is 16, so therefore we have a hit every four steps. This is the thing that separates Euclidean rhythms from other more traditional rhythms. No matter how many hits you have, they are distributed as evenly as possible across the sequence's length. So even if we have an odd number of hits and an even number of steps, so here we have five hits against 16 steps, it still tries to place them as evenly as possible across the ring. But because 5 doesn't go into 16 very well, you get an extra beat at the end there, and that's what starts to create these syncopations and groovy rhythms. So let's go to channel 2 and set up a kind of 4 on the floor beat there, if we bring that up. And go back to channel 1 you can start to hear some polyrhythms emerging. And this brings us to the final aspect that we need to consider when making Euclidean rhythms, and that is the rotation, or offset. Euclidean sequences will very often allow you to rotate the sequence, and we can do that here by holding down this knob and turning it. And you'll see that the hits have now been shifted along. We can shift them backwards and forwards. And that just allows us to introduce some rhythmic variation to our patterns and make them interesting. Now it's worth noting that Euclidean rhythms don't have to sound very complicated. If we bring this back to two beats and align it again, that is a Euclidean rhythm and it's pretty boring to be honest, but it just goes to show that Euclidean rhythms don't have to be complicated, they can be very simple, it's just about how the beats are dispersed across the sequence's length. Now let's have a play about and see what this can do.
There we go. So I hope this video has helped you to understand what Euclidean rhythms are and how to make them. I hope you're inspired to go out and make some of your own and thank you again to Qubit for providing the Pulsar module. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.